So let's take probably the simplest multiplication problem I can come up with, and that will be the following. One half, the fraction one half, and it's multiplied by, that's what the dot means, uh, one half. All right, we don't use x's for multiplication anymore because we're going to be using variables, letters, uh, and so we use x a lot. So we're not using x for multiplication anymore. When you see a dot, it means multiply, uh, same as before using an x. So but first, before we get started, I want to represent what these fractions actually mean. The first fraction, uh, fraction here is one half. So if you have a whole circle and you take only, cut it into two pieces and take one, then we say we have a half. And we're multiplying this fraction one half by this other fraction. So I'll put like a dot between them because what's really happening is you're taking the first fraction and you're multiplying it by the second fraction. Now before we actually talk about what this means, let's calculate the answer. When we multiply fractions, also when we divide fractions, we do not need a common denominator. You know, common denominator, we have to use it when we add and subtract fractions, but actually we don't need to do any of that stuff when we're multiplying or dividing fractions. It's actually much easier. To multiply fractions, all you do is you multiply the numerators together, and then you multiply the denominators together. It doesn't really matter that this is two and two. We do not have to have a co common denominator. So we multiply on the, in the numerator one times one, and on the denominator, it's two times two. So I'm just showing you here what you're doing in each position. One times one is one, and two times two is four. So the answer to this problem of one half times one half is the fraction one fourth. And we always ask ourselves, can we simplify this fraction? But we actually can't in this case, one fourth is the simplest way we can write this. And of course the fraction one fourth, as you know, you can put it any, any which way you want, but this is what the fraction one fourth is. So what we want to actually do is understand why is it when we multiply one half times one half, we get one fourth. All right. So mechanically, we multiply the tops, we get an answer. We multiply the bottoms, we get an answer, simplify, and then that is our answer. Now, what I want you to think about when it comes to multiplying fractions is I want you to think of an ax. You know, the thing you come out to would cut a tree down. You chop a tree down, right? What you're doing is you're starting with the first fraction you have, one half. That's what you're starting with, half of a pizza. Think of it as half of a pizza. And when you multiply by whatever it is you're multiplying by, the second fraction is just representing how much you're going to chop down the first fraction. So what it's basically saying here is you're going to start out with half of a pizza. That's what this represents. And you're going to chop it into, uh, into one half of what it once was. So you started out with this amount and this fraction just means, if you think of a whole circle, this fraction is a whole, uh, if you can think of a whole circle and this fraction is half of that, that's what the fraction half means. And it's telling you to take whatever you start with, the whole, which is what you've been given to start with, and you're cutting it in half of what you once started with. So this, this size doesn't, the size doesn't matter at all. It's just telling you, start with this, cut it into half, because this fraction, one half, is one half of its own full circle. So if you were to start with this, and you cut it in half, because this fraction is telling you how much to chop it by, then you can see right away that one fourth is the answer, because if I start with this and cut it in half, the answer that I get is one fourth, that is half of what I started with. If I change this fraction, to chop it by a different amount, maybe I chop it by more than one half, then I will start with this and I'll end up with a little bit more than half as my answer. If I chop it by a fraction less than a half, then I'm gonna take what I start with and I'm gonna cut it so that I have less than one half of what I started with. So when you think of fraction multiplication, Try, try not to look at the sizes of the fractions too much. What it's really doing is it's telling you start with this much stuff and then chop it by whatever the second fraction represents. The second fraction in this case is a half, so all we do is we start with this much stuff and we cut it in half. And half of that, of course, is equal to one fourth. So that is what we're doing every time we multiply fractions. So let's move on to problem two, and I think we'll get the hang of it even further. Let's say we have, again, the fraction one half is what we're starting with, but instead of multiplying by a half, we'll multiply by one fourth. So we're starting with half of a pizza, but we're not cutting it in half, we're cutting it uh, to one fourth of the size that it originally was. So let's first calculate how to actually uh, get the answer here. What we're going to do to get the answer is we multiply the tops. One times one is one, and we multiply the bottoms. Two times four is eight. So to get the numerator, one times one is one, two times four is eight, and we ask, can we simplify this fraction? We can't because one eighth, I cannot uh, 
simplify by dividing top and bottom by something to make it any simpler, so the answer is 1 8. Let's try to understand what this actually means. So again, it's the same sort of thing. We start out with a half of a pizza. This is what half of a pizza looks like. But we're not going to cut it in half. We're going to cut it into uh, one-fourth of the size. This fraction, you have to think of the full circle. The full circle is a whole circle here. You have one segment, another segment, another segment, and then this would be the last fourth. So what you're doing is you're asking yourself, take this pizza, cut it into four equal pieces, and only take one of them. So if we take this pizza and cut it into Here's taking it, cutting it into half, and then cutting it into half again, cutting it into half again, and take only one piece. What's it going to look like? It's going to look like one eighth because that would be one piece. The next piece would fit in something like this. The third piece would fit in something like this, and the fourth piece would be something like this. So take what you start with, and to chop it down by one fourth of its original size, you cut it into four equal pieces and only take one of them. Four equal pieces and only take one of them means the answer has to be one eighth. Same thing here. We started with a half, and this is telling us to cut it in half, which means to, to cut it into two equal pieces and only take one of them. And that's why the fraction that we got as an answer was one fourth. So we're chopping it down, in this case, by something less than half of its original size. So this is much smaller than half of its original size. It is one fourth of its original size. All right, this will be the last fraction where we will uh, solve the problem and, and use the magnets. After that, we'll just be calculating. Let's take again one half times two thirds. You might be asking, why am I using one half so much? Mostly it's because it, I want to choose a fraction large enough so you can see what's happening. It, this process, this idea of chopping it, it works for any multiplication problem. But when we start with a half of a pizza, everybody can visualize that so it makes it easier to talk about. One half times two thirds. Two thirds is, is, is a larger fraction. So we're going to start with this one half and we're going to cut it down uh, by this amount, two thirds, or by this fraction, two thirds. To get the answer, what do we do? We multiply the tops. One times two is what? Two. And we multiply the bottoms. Two times three is six. So we get an answer of two sixths. And we always ask ourselves, can we simplify? This one we actually can simplify because they're both even numbers. So we can divide the top fraction by two and we can divide the bottom fraction by two and we get two divided by two is one, six divided by two is three and we get an answer of one third. So again, we can calculate by multiplying the tops, multiplying the bottoms and then simplifying. Most people can do that once I teach it to you, but let's go a step further and try to understand what it means. What it means is we start again with half of a pizza and we're not chopping it into a half of its original size. We're not chopping it into fourths of its original size. What we're doing is we're trying to represent and chop it by something called two thirds. Think of the whole pizza being one piece, two pieces, three pieces, and two thirds of the pizza is two out of three pieces. So what it's telling us is take what you start with and chop it. So when we chop it, we're gonna cut this, pe this piece that we started with into three equal pieces, and we're going to keep two of them. Then we're gonna chop it down by cutting it into three equal pieces and, uh, and only keeping two of them, just as we have here for our whole circle, two out of three pieces. The answer we got is one third. Let's see if this makes sense. If we were to cut this thing into three equal pieces and keep two of them, what would that actually look like? Well, if we cut it into three equal pieces, this would be one piece here, this piece would be one, and then we'd cut it right here, this would be in the next piece, and the third slice would be down here. So if we cut it into one, two, three, you gotta imagine another cut here, one, two, three equal pieces and keep two of them, then this whole orange wedge is what we actually end up with, which is one third of a pizza, and that's why it's one third. Same as two six. these are the exact same thing. So, we're going to solve more problems, but in every case, we start with what we are given, one half. We chop it by one half, meaning we cut it into two pieces, what we start with, and we only keep one of them. That's why it became one fourth. We started again with a half of a pizza. We cut that and chopped it into four equal pieces, and we only kept one of them, so the answer was one eighth. We chopped it down. In this case, we started with one half of a pizza. We cut it and chopped it down into three equal pieces, would be one and then two, one, two, three, and we kept two of them, and when we did that, we got a fraction of one third is the answer. So in every case, fraction multiplication is just taking what you start with and chopping it down by whatever the second fraction is telling you to chop it by. So you cut it down by that, by that fractional amount. 
So for the rest of the problems, we're not going to use any magnets. We're just going to calculate and simplify. Let's take a look at 2 fifths, the fraction 2 fifths, and we're going to multiply it by 2 thirds. So it's the same problem as before. We're just starting with a different amount of pizza. Two fifths of a pizza will be a different amount, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it into three equal pieces and only take two of them. How much will we have when we chop it by that amount? We multiply the tops. Two times two is four. Remember, multiply. And five times three, multiply to get 15. Notice that you're not getting any kind of common denominator. Multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. We cannot simplify this any further, so we say 4 fifteenths is the final answer. All right, great. Moving right along, let's take a look at 4 fifths, and we're going to multiply that by 3 eighths. Again, what does this mean? It means you start with 4 fifths of a pizza, and you chop it by the fraction 3 eighths. That means whatever you start with, you cut it into 8 equal pieces, and you only keep 3 of them. That's what chopping does. How do we get the answer? We multiply the numerators, 4 times 3 is 12. Multiply the denominators, 5 times 8 is 40. We have 12 fortieths, and that is the correct answer, but we can simplify this further. 12 fortieths. Now we know that they're even, we, they're even numbers, so we could divide by 2, but then I recognize I can also divide by 4, so I'm going to do that. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 40 divided by 4 is 10. So the answer that you get is 3 tenths. So if you start with this much pizza and chop it down by, by whatever this fraction is indicating, in other words, cut it into eight slices and keep three, the answer I'm going to get is 3 tenths of a pizza when I line all of those pieces up together. 3 tenths. All right. We're almost done. Halfway point. We're past the halfway point. Let's take a look at 11 twelfths, and we're going to multiply that by 2 thirds. So again, take the first... Uh, amount, and we're chopping it down by two-thirds. So we're going to cut whatever this is into three equal pieces and only keep two of them. How do we find the final answer? Multiply 11 times 2, which is 22 for the numerator, and 12 times 3, which is 36 for that denominator. So that's the final answer. 22, well, it's not the final answer, but it's an intermediate answer because we can see that these are even numbers. 22, 36. So I know I can simplify it by dividing by 2, dividing by 2. 22 divided by 2 is 11, and 36 divided by 2 is 18. 18 times 2 is 36. You can grab a, sh a sheet of paper to make sure that you agree with that. And 11 eighteenths is the final answer. I want you to pay attention to the final two problems. They're both important. Let's take a look at 4 thirds, and we're going to multiply that by 4 fifths. Now, what do you notice that's different about this one? Um, the main difference is you can tell that in all of the other problems, 11 twelfths, 4 fifths, 1 half, 2 fifths, it, they were improper. But this fraction, 4 thirds, is an uh, improper fraction. So all of the fractions before may have misspoke. I don't know for sure, but these were all uh, proper fractions before. This one is an improper fraction. That means that this fraction is bigger than one whole pizza. It's cutting a pizza into thirds, but having four of them. So you, you actually have one and a third pizzas here when you convert this to mixed number. So you're starting with something larger than a whole pizza, and then you're chopping it down. Sometimes you can end up with an answer that's bigger than a whole pizza. You'll see what I'm saying here. Let's go ahead and just continue to multiply as usual. We do the same thing. 4 times 4 is 16, and 3 times 5 is 15. So we have 16 fifteenths. Notice we got an, uh, an improper fraction there. How do we convert this to a mixed number? 16 divided by 15, how many times does it go? One whole time. And how many is left over? 16 minus 15 is only one left over, and, and these are in terms of 15. So the fraction 16 fifteenths is the same as the fraction 1 and 1 fifteenth. So converting fractions uh, improper fractions to mixed numbers. If you need practice for that, go back to the previous lessons on that. We've covered that in the past. These two ways of writing the fraction are exactly the same thing. Cut, cut a pizza into, 15th, uh, into 15 slices, but you have 16 of them, which means you have more than one pizza, or you can represent it as one whole pizza and one fifteenth left over. All right, so I can really circle either of them or both of them. They're both fine. Uh, but why do we get something bigger than one? It's because we actually started with a pizza larger than a whole pizza. We started with one whole pizza. Convert this to a mixed number. Four thirds, you divide it in, it'll be one and one third. So this is already bigger than a, a, um, 
a whole pizza, and then we're cutting it down by four fifths, which is also really close to one. So sometimes you can actually get an answer bigger than one because you start with an amount of pizza bigger than one, which is what we have done here. All right, let's take a look at our last problem. Let's take a look at three fourths and we're gonna multiply that by five halves. All right, so let's just crank through it and then we'll try to understand more about what's going on in this problem. Multiply the numerators, three times five, 15. Multiply the denominators, two times four is eight. We get a fraction that is again improper, 15 is bigger. So we have to convert. Eight times one is eight, eight times two is 16. So it cannot go two times, it only goes one time. And then uh, eight times one is eight. So if we find the remainder 15 minus eight, what are we gonna have? We're gonna have seven left over out of eight, and everything's in terms of eight slices. So uh, one and seven eighths is exactly the same thing as 15 eighths. So these are correct. Again, we got a fraction bigger than one, why? It's because this is less than one whole pizza, three fourths, but this, we're chopping it down by five halves. We're chopping it down by something bigger than one. Think about what that means. If you were to convert this to a mixed number, two times two is four, so it goes two times, and then five minus four is one, out of two. So it really, if you convert this, it would go two and one half, two and a half. So what you're doing is you're taking this and you're multiplying it by two and a half, which means you're multiplying it by something bigger than two. You're more than doubling what you started with. So of course the answer, if you start with three fourths and you more than double it, you're gonna get something bigger than one. That's why these fractions are coming out to be uh, larger than one. So for most of these problems, we are multiplying fraction times a fraction, very small fractions together. So most of the answers we're getting are just these small fractions. But if you take a fraction that's larger than one and start multiplying it by another fraction, you can get an answer bigger than one or an improper fraction, however you wanna write it. Uh, same thing here, this fraction was bigger than one, so sometimes you can get a fraction uh, larger than one there as well. So here we've conquered multiplying fractions incredibly crucial material. I'd like you to practice all of these yourself. When you feel that you're comfortable, follow me on to part two. We'll get more skills and practice with multiplying fractions together. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.